All right, guys. It is time to make tomatoes again. I've already made a couple of bushels, and I have just a little under a bushel right now that I have left. I put some in the freezer, but I did put many of them in jars already. And I'm going to show you. These are my beautiful big uh, steak tomatoes that we use for just eating in sandwiches. But I want to show you. I have already a couple of cases that I made of tomatoes already in jars. And as you could tell, I only have the flat part of the jar. We took the rims off, but this is all my new tomatoes. I have one left year of stewed tomatoes. That's when I make pizza and I have one of my last year sauces there. These other ones are all 2021. I have more year. I also put some in my uh, in smaller jars so if Erica wants to just make something for herself like a small you know a little bit of pasta for lunch all she has to do is pull out one of these smaller jars I will be getting a lot more cases of tomatoes before they go up in prices but I still have as you can see last year's that's all last year's there so I had to buy new jars to do my tomatoes. Uh, these ones here, I keep them for sauerkrauts. These are my bean jars, but I don't throw them away because when I make sauerkraut, I like to put them in these jars because they go in my fridge. They don't go on a shelf. I still have tangerines from last year. I have a couple of cans of peaches. You can see these are peaches that I made last year 2020 delicious my granddaughters freaked out when they tried them i do have some hot peppers back here that i have left i do also have some empty jars in here i just have to reorganize everything because it is a disaster in this garage because i started to do some prepping and as you can see i have bins and boxes of food that go all the way up my ceiling when I say I have boxes of food this is all food guys look at this I still have to box those I have to put them in bins I have my bins numbered and then I have it uh, there's bins under here I'm not sure if you can see hold on more bins more bins right underneath there I have there we go more bins I have another bin here of food so I do have a lot of boxes those are boxes of food uh, let me see if you can see what it says there it is dried assorted mushrooms this was stored away 2020 April so, yeah I've got lots of food so I gotta reorganize myself and I had to, I'll show you what else I had to do because these were getting so heavy that I had to have my husband make these slabs of uh, plywood that he had cut that is bigger than my container. So when I put another container on top, it doesn't crush the one underneath because we were putting them one on top of each other. Lesson learned they pretty much started to buckle on me so we have to put the plywood in between for now i want to be able to there's a shelf system back there i have things stored away there but i want to be able to empty out that shelf and start putting uh, my jars there i really want to make a nice in here right now i don't have time to do that so everything is stacked this way which is basically a disaster as you could tell as you could tell, it's just a disaster. We did come and uh, take some food out of my bins over the uh, over last weekend because we took the girls camping and we just didn't have time to run to the store. <laughs> so I was able to go through my book, see where I had my stuff, and I uh, pulled out what we needed, like backpacker meals and stuff like that. Okay, so... Here are our beautiful tomatoes. Now, when my mom used to make sauce, uh, basically she would take these tomatoes, she would put them in boiling water, and 
she would take a knife and scrape the outside of the tomato until the skin would peel off like onion skin. And then she would cut that up and she would squeeze or cut it in half or quarters and she would squeeze the water out and then she would make sauce with just the pulp that's left. Today, personally, I mean, I used to do them like that because that's the way my mother ta taught me how to do them. But today, I really believe that the least amount of waste you can do, the better it is. Uh, I'm sure she would agree with me if she was here today because I make my life so much easier compared to what her life was. That woman worked like a dog. She worked so hard and that's how she used to do her tomatoes. But as the years went by i started to be a little less wasteful so what i would do is i would pull out a blender i'm using the diamond for this because i really don't need the vitamix to do this and i would take these tomatoes after they're washed throw them into the blender blend them into like a sauce a puree and then i put them to cook in my uh, in my pot so I really prefer doing them this way because I am less wasteful. Nothing gets wasted. And I told you, as you, uh, you'll see, if my tomato sauce is a little watery, I have a little trick where I add a little bit of potato flakes. And you'll see it in the video. But yeah, I don't throw away the water anymore. I use everything. I've seen famous chefs use just the water of the tomato and turn it into a soup. So... I waste nothing, not the skin and not the water and not even the seeds. Everything gets blended up and my sauce, not to just like toot my own horn, my sauce is delicious, delicious, delicious. Maybe not as good as my mother's because you know what the saying is, you're never as good as your mother, but my sauce is delicious. Very simple to do guys and it's so handy. You come home from work or uh, you've worked all day, even if you work from home, you just don't have time. Uh, you just grab a jar, pasta's ready in no time at all. So I'm going to say I love you. Keep watching this video and I'll show you how I jar them. What do I do to preserve them? And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I'm ster I've been sterilizing my jars and the lids, the ones that I have in here. There's not that many jars because I make small batches. Here is my sauce ready. Now this is not just pasada. I've made pasada that's very easy to do but this is sauce ready to eat guys so these are gonna go in jars but I don't want to overcook it either if you overcook it then it tastes it doesn't taste as fresh so what I do to thicken up my sauce I think if you look at one of my older videos you would know uh, one of my canning videos what I do is i'll show you oh and that's that meat remember i told you i throw these in dry while i'm making the sauce and it just picks up the flavor of the sauce it is just simply simply delicious you would never know if it wasn't chicken bits but what i do to thicken up my sauce i add a couple of handfuls of potato flakes now you're going to say potato flakes in spaghetti sauce when I tell you, you would never know there was potato flakes in here, but what it does is it thickens up my sauce and I don't have to boil this down to the point where there's hardly any sauce left. Number one, I get more tomatoes, uh, more tomato jars this way than if I would just reduce this till it's thick enough for me to turn it into a sauce. So the flavor is delicious already. All I did was put a couple of handfuls of potato flakes. I like my thickness now and now I'm ready to jar these. So this really didn't take long to do. I don't even remove the skins off my tomatoes. Uh, these are washed tomatoes. All I have to do is throw them in a blender and then throw my sauce in with of course the way I normally make my sauce. Very fresh tasting pasta sauce and you know what a year later if you open up one of these jars it tastes just as fresh as when you made it right Erica mm -hmm. my husband when he saw I was making sauce he wanted some pasta Erica my husband so we opened one of our older jars and you would not know the difference if it was made that moment but you have to have of course your jars sterilized you don't want to touch 
anything with your hands you want to make sure you're pretty clean I'm trying to do this with one hand which is almost impossible um, I have it in my oven at 250 and I've had them in there since I started to prepare my sauce so they're already sterilized and I did jack up the heat to 275 because I wasn't sure if they were going to be in there long enough and then lower them again to 250 now I'm gonna leave this oven on and as I make my jars I'm putting them back in the oven okay so this is the thickness that I want I don't want my sauce too thick I want it a little more runny but it's thick enough as you could tell once I put those potatoes in and if a little bit of garlic goes in my jar that's okay also I also put carrots and celery, so if a piece of that goes in there, that's all right. There we go. A little bit of meat. Lucky who gets it. I also put some mushrooms. I have some chanterelles. That's going in. Now, the only thing I'm going to touch is my there we go my funnel okay I'm gonna take a clean paper towel here we go and it's gonna go right on top I'm gonna do this without okay and I am going to put this back in the oven. Okay, I also want to show you just a little extra. Sorry, I also want to show you just a little extra sauce there. You want to be able to leave about that much from the top of the jar. But you want to make sure that you want to make sure that it's nice and clean and dry around the rim before yeah I need another one because look what I did to that one I put sauce on that one there we go you got it on I'm doing this with one hand but usually I use two guys and I make sure I don't burn myself so don't forget those rims really have to be clean otherwise you're not going to make a good seal and hot guys I keep my burner on when I am making my jars because I want to keep that sauce as hot as I can keep it all right guys I have just a little left if somebody wants to dip some bread and this is what I've done so far I've got some small ones like for a little package of gnocchi guys and I have bigger ones and because our life is a pretty busy life we've got our grandkids are still here I do things in small batches but it gets done so I do a little bit maybe once or twice a day and uh, in no time at all they're gonna be done they'll be done by tomorrow the day after until I get more cases of tomatoes but there you go now I've got them in the oven again at 250 and I'm gonna keep them in there for 45 minutes these are already very very hot in there the jars were in this oven for over an hour so they were nice and sterilized so these are going to be uh, perfect and then I turn off the oven and I just let them sit there till tomorrow morning when I'm able to take them out so there you go I hope you like this little tip and if you do leave a comment let me know what you think and if you want to share your system leave it in a comment and I'm going to say I love you don't forget to like don't don't forget to share, and I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.